Welcome back to Dice to Pixels, episode some insert number here. Uh, I believe it's 12. Whatever. Insert number here. <laughs> Just for reference, that took about four takes. Yeah, yeah, there was some... There <laughs> I'm was some... good at the words. <laughs> so what do we want to start with today? Are we starting with the Twitch BS? I think we should start with the Twitch BS. Let's start with the Twitch BS. Chad, tell us about this Twitch BS. Absolutely, yeah. There's some uh, some streamers are quite outraged. Uh, I guess um, yesterday, uh, the president of Twitch, Mr. Dan Clancy, announced a change to the revenue system uh, that would mean that a lot of the top performing Twitch people won't be getting an, a lot of their money now. Uh, they had an agreement in place for a 70 to 30 revenue split. And I guess after right now, they're grandfathering in a new policy where yeah, your first 100,000 will be 70-30, but then after that, it goes to 50-50. Yeah. So so anyone can make up to that amount? Up to, uh, to 100,000. Uh, no, 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 actually. So here, so here's the way that it works, if I understand correctly. Uh, you can check me in the article, but um, all new Twitchers yeah. from now on are 50-50. Everybody, no matter how many sub uh, followers, subscribers, whatever, everybody's 50-50. People who are already on 70-30 mm. are now also, they get the first 100,000. So they get the first 70,000 they get. And then after that, they're on 50-50 as well. Ooh. So it's not just, it's actually people who have been there since the beginning as well are getting fucked on this. So don't look for us on Twitch anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, so look, obviously shitty move, yeah. uh, Twitch is, they're jerks. They've done this a few times. They've done similar things. They're, they're not good people. Uh, I shouldn't say that Twitch actually, uh, are not the worst people in the world. Look, the bottom line here is that Twitch is the most monetized platform on yeah. the internet and, uh, people, I, if people think they can make more elsewhere, they'll switch. I think what you'll see is that people will be outraged about it, and they have every right to be outraged about 100%. it. One hundred percent. They're putting so much effort into everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there was a there was a tweet here uh, in reply to it uh, by at uh, uh, Devin Nash, who um, basically said, "How to understand this? Uh, the top five hundred creators will earn twenty nine percent less revenue per subscriber after reaching one hundred thousand dollars earned in a year." No other Twitch streamer will be affected. More alarming in this post is Twitch saying they can't afford to run the website. So that's probably true, though, for the yeah. record. So, I mean, I, I know about these things. Uh, I, I have a pretty good understanding of, of how Twitch works. And it's expensive. It's it's horribly expensive with all of the transcoding and everything that they do. Um, it's not surprising to me that they want a bigger cut. It's not surprising that people are pissed off about it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is one of those situations where the free market is going to decide. And I can pretty much guarantee that Twitch is going to be just fine. And the yeah. reason for that is because every person that I know who switched from Twitch to something else, be it Mixer, be it YouTube, be it anything, they have made less money where they went. Or in some cases, the platform is straight up closed down. Say it's uh, because of like installed users, like an installed user base on Twitch. Mostly. It's actually not that. Um, no. That there's part of that. Uh, the actual reason is that Twitch did somehow they did such a good job monetizing the platform. There is a culture on Twitch of spending money. When people watch Twitch, they expect to spend, spend money. money. Yeah, and as a result, yeah. people spend money. We, uh, in a past life, uh, Twitch, you can make thousands of dollars a month as a small creator on Twitch if you have the right stuff happening and the right people and everything else. Mm -hmm. You can't do that on any other, a, any other platform. Technically, you can. YouTube has Super Chats. They have stickers. They have whatever. Mm -hmm. But practically speaking, Twitch actually gets people to spend money and no other platform does. That kind of makes sense, considering that's been what the platform has been about since basically day one, I think. From day so, one. That's yeah. the key. Yep. Yeah. From day one, bits and subs cost money, and it was expected, and you were paying for the content. Mm -hmm. YouTube has always been free, and so people mm -hmm. don't expect to pay for YouTube live streams. Yeah. Facebook, I mean, 
I don't actually know what the culture on Facebook is, to be perfectly honest. What I do know is that almost nobody actually goes to Facebook. There are There is a growing number of people streaming on Facebook, and I think you have something to add there, but uh, Facebook is still tiny. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. To me, from what I've seen on some of the uh, some of the GTA RP uh, users that we follow, uh, Lord Cabin and uh, Rated Epics and uh, uh, Das Maddie, I it looks like stars are like Facebook's version of bits. Um, there is, uh, subscribers, like you can subscribe to it for like no ads and stuff like that. So I think the architecture is somewhat similar, but I don't know how the stars is broken down. I think I remember hearing someplace that one star is like one cent or something like that. I thought that was bits. Uh, it's probably both oh, if okay. we're honest. Yeah. I mean, anyone with a brain is going to copy what Twitch did because yeah. let's face yeah. it, it, it makes it easy for people to. And that honestly is where Facebook or it's not Facebook, uh, YouTube dropped the ball so badly. Yes. If YouTube had announced, hey, we're going into streaming and we are going to literally copy what Twitch did. So if you are a Twitch streamer or a Twitch viewer, you can come over to YouTube and you can buy YouTube bits, whatever they're called. Yeah. And you can spend them just exactly the way you're used to and subs work just exactly Mm -hmm. the same way that you ever expected with one modification, which is what Twitch still should do. If you're subscribed to more than five channels, you get ad free on the entire platform. That is something that people have wanted from Twitch since day one and they won't do. If they if YouTube had done that. They would probably be winning the streaming awards, or even right like now. a yeah. like a like a Twitch premium, where even if you're not subscribed, but you have like a like a premium, like a Twitch premium thing, where kind of like what YouTube is, with like the YouTube premium, where you pay a certain amount per month and you get no ads, no matter what you watch on YouTube. Sure, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. that would also be excellent. It would have to cost more, I think. Um, yeah. Although it's hard to say because I can tell you right now. I don't know about what Twitch makes from advertising, but I know the creators on Twitch make dick all from advertising. Yeah. And the reason is you can't target it well. No. Um, Harris Heller has done, ext- he's a, he's on YouTube. He used to be on Twitch and he lost a lot of his income moving to YouTube, but he's okay with it because he makes a lot of money elsewhere. <laughs> um, he did long videos on this topic about the fact that like, if I start a three hour stream, which is pretty typical, maybe yep. even on the short end these days, I might say, oh, I'm going to chat about AV gear or I might say I'm going to play World of Warcraft. But am I really going to going to do that for the entire stream? And the answer is probably not. I'm Mm -hmm. probably going to meander. We're going to talk about stuff. We're going to do whatever. We might switch games. I might play games with chat, whatever. And that is very, very difficult to advertise to, to target advertising. Yeah. As a result... Twitch doesn't get paid nearly as much by advertisers as YouTube does. So YouTube solved this by just not doing ads during live streams. So do you think... And probably appreciated by people that watch it too. I imagine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so do you think that's why uh, YouTube added that tip jar thing? Is is kind of like a, kind of like a way to give somebody a, like a, a way to give people bits, like their, their favorite creator, like bits on a video... What say? Uh, yeah. Well, so YouTube is desperately trying to figure out how to monetize. Yeah. Um, they have been for a while. And to be honest, uh, if they had been, if they had done this all, uh, what, eight years ago, mm-hmm. it probably would have worked fine because everything they're doing makes sense. <laughs> Chad's opening his bottle. Uh, everything that they're doing makes sense in isolation. The idea of super chats makes perfect sense. It's donations. The The idea of the tip jar is a great idea. Mm-hmm. Here's this video that I posted. You can, you can show your appreciation after the fact. Yeah. Great idea. Well executed. But Twitch bits work well because as a creator, I know what they're worth. And I've said mm-hmm. this before. This isn't new to either of you or probably to the viewers. One bit is one cent. Now, now, if Facebook did the it same, is the same, it is the yeah. same. Right. I checked. It is the same. That's awesome because as a creator, if I know that one bit is one cent USD, yep, I can base things on that. I can say for a thousand bits, I will do X, and I know what that's worth. If I say for a donation of ten dollars, is that USD? Is it New Zealand dollars? Is it Canadian dollars? Yeah. Is it who the who the hell knows? Mm. And as a as a viewer, do I have to like look up the current currency exchange and donate the right amount? Yeah. 
Uh, so that's why bits work so well. That's one of the major mm -hmm. reasons bits work so well is because as a creator, you can set essentially a menu of things that that like support levels for your fans. Yeah, it's yeah. basically like a, a universal currency. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's the same as in-game uh, currencies have yep. always been. It's it's yep. let's put everybody on the exact same footing, even mm -hmm. playing field, and then we know what to charge. Yeah, yeah. So and and one thing that's always kind of like price point aside that's bothered me about super chats is like maybe want to donate to whatever's going on right now. I don't have anything to say though. I don't want my even if I had a message to say like. It yeah. just it, the fact that it's highlighted, I, like because because personally I'm an introvert, I don't always want whatever I say to be like, hey, look at me or anything like that. It's unless she's talking to me. I think you can do anonymous super chats. I'm not sure, but uh but yeah, point taken. I mean yeah. the sort of the thing with, with Twitch is that there is again a culture of that sort of like almost throwaway donation where it's mm -hmm. like, Yep, I'm just tossing some bits because Screw it. This is awesome. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So anyways, uh, my opinion on this is that you'll hear a lot of hate about mm -hmm. this. And then everyone who is hating on it will either switch platforms and make less money or they'll suck it up and continue making money on Twitch. I probably actually, the vast majority of people will do. Yeah. I actually wouldn't be surprised if more streamers ended up going to uh, to Facebook gaming. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. So... Uh, yeah, if Facebook is, uh, copying the way that Twitch works, I think yeah. that's likely. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, let's, uh, let's skip the, the second thing here and we'll just hey. talk about, well, no, because there's, <laughs> we're, we're going to talk about it, but there's going to be more to talk about because of uh, a recent purchase that Mr. Adrian made. That's true. But, uh, as everybody knows, uh, last week, near the end of last week, there was a massive GTA six leak, <clears throat> huge leak about, uh, showing footage from the game and development, uh, a bunch of screenshots. Well, uh, the the source code, the source leaked, code, which is yeah. the big part. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So today, uh, they arrested somebody. Uh, and it was a today being Friday. Today being Friday. <laughs> Thank you, mom. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, London City Police announced they had arrested a 17 year old from uh, the Oxfordshire uh, Thursday evening. Uh, the police have yet to confirm why it's been reported the team was arrested in connection with the recent Uber and Grand Theft Auto 6 leaks. For our UK viewers, uh, I will apologize for Chad's pronunciation of Oxfordshire. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is hardly surprising. Uh, the only slightly surprising thing is that they um, theoretically found a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, tried to get in contact with uh, Rockstar for negotiations, and uh, yeah, those negotiations didn't happen. The kid no. tried to get in touch with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they they had said Rockstar had said that in their announcement that the person had said that they were going to release more if if Rockstar didn't pay them or something. And it's like unless you're say unless you sent them an anonymous email in which case they're not going to believe that it was you anyways mm -hmm. like how do you, you you need to validate that you're the one who has it and give them a way to anonymously give you money in order for this to work yeah. and you can do that but uh my guess is that your average 17 year old doesn't have the amount of sort of social intelligence required to pull that off so yeah. uh, <laughs> Yeah. So anyways, got arrested. Uh, I'd be curious to know how many dead man switches exist for leaking the source code, because if I were hacking a major company and was concerned that I might go to jail, I'd set up a dead man switch. So we'll see if uh, by the time you're watching this, the source code might be leaked online. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? And on that note. Miss Sarah, would you like to lead our next little story here? Yeah, um, apparently. Um... Who it was? We are going to be seeing a new item from Logitech um, in October. They are releasing a handheld, uh, cloud-only gaming con hand handheld console. Um, yeah, and it's going to be for um, Xbox. Um, oh my God! Cloud gaming. Xbox yes. Cloud Gaming. Thank you. Apparently, when I'm singled out, I 
become highly <laughs> stressed and <laughs> can't deal with it. <laughs> but it's running with an Android operating system, fun stuff like that. You'll get access to Android apps through the Android store. And it's the pre-order right now is $300 American. And then when it's released on October 17th, it's going to go up to 350 Yeah. So I, I think they buried the lead on this uh, because, of course, Xbox Cloud Gaming, which, by the way, I, I have... I have opinions. What? Uh, yeah. No. I know. First time in my life I've had an opinion about something. Uh, they're actually mostly good, by the way. Uh, but uh, they kind of buried the lead because, and and first I'm going to say the joke, and then and then I'm going to cover the fact that this actually might be cool. Uh, obviously, being an Android tablet, essentially, you'll be able to play Stadia on this. And that's what everybody cares about. Yes. Stadia <laughs> is awesome, and uh, actually, no, the Stadia controller was is, great. The Stadia I, is yeah, great. Yeah, I the, love, controller the, the Stadia is controller amazing. is freaking fantastic, and I yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, the streaming technology is is really quite good too. The actual like product is great. It's just that it didn't have any games, and it sucked. And and yeah. who the fuck cares? But so, anyways, yeah, you can play Stadia on your uh, on your new Logitech, whatever the hell. Uh, I don't think they gave it a name. Uh, yes. Cloud only gaming is all it says. G Cloud. Oh, G Cloud. Perfect. Yep. So yeah, it's basically an Android phone with controls. That's that's really what it is. Mm-hmm. Except I don't think it has LTE or does it? I didn't actually um, see. I didn't see anything about that in there. Uh, I don't see LTE, which would make sense because honestly, LTE cloud gaming sucks balls anyways. So yeah, it's basically a phone with controls on it, mm-hmm. which... Uh, and a few people have kind of called this out already, so this isn't trailblazing, but it's not going to be very good at $300 for, no. uh, what amounts to a phone with controls. Yeah. Yeah. Like even the article, it says that you basically just buy a new phone, get a controller for your current phone, or just get a Steam Deck instead for the price point. Cause it's not far off from, um, switches right now or from this, yeah. from one of the Steam Decks. Well, yeah, and, and therein lies the real problem. Xbox Cloud, which is what this is, yeah. already works on Android and iOS. Yeah. Find me someone who would spend $300 on this that doesn't already have a, an iPhone or an Android phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, but hey, uh, that's cool. It's a cool uh, product. Good on them for yep. doing something new. The option is there. Logitech usually has a track record of making some pretty good products anyway, too, so... I have mm-hmm. confidence that it will be a high quality mm-hmm. product. The only thing that I think will suffer badly is the battery life. Uh, I don't think they're going to get, regardless of anything that they say, yeah. I don't think they're going to get a very good battery in it for 300 bucks with the screen and high quality controls. No. Like if you think about your average game controller costs, even the Xbox ones, which are cheap, cheap. yeah, and don't come with a battery, uh, <laughs> yeah. they cost 60 bucks. Uh, yeah. Canadian, admittedly, yeah. but uh, you take that, split it in half, and whack a phone in between, and you're trying to sell it for three hundred bucks. I have my doubts. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Especially with a lot of people already having the Switch right now, and uh, the Steam Deck slowly making its way, you know, through and stuff like that, and then even, uh, even uh, like you were just saying, you, uh, any handheld device that you freaking have, you know, will double at it. So. And with being uh, Bluetooth compatible too, like you could use Bluetooth controllers on some phones as well to like. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. well, uh, the Xbox actually, they they may, and uh, not just Xbox, by the way, it's just, I just bought an Xbox. Uh, they make little clips that uh, you can uh, put your phone right on the controller. Yeah. Oh. And, and literally just, that's your whole gaming system right there. Just well, bam. that's cool. Which honestly, I'd be more likely to. I want one. <laughs> I want one too. Well, then why are we getting one? Well, incidentally, you don't need the Xbox to do that. I, I still want an Xbox. Okay, fair enough. Still this, want to get one. this actually blew my mind a little bit because, of course, I bought the Xbox, uh, signed up for Xbox Game Pass, which, by the way, if you're a Discord Nitro subscriber, mm-hmm. I got two free months of Game Pass Ultimate, which is great. Woo-hoo. Uh, but uh, yeah, you uh, you can play Xbox Online, Xbox Cloud without uh, owning the system at all. So you can just go and buy an Xbox controller and the clip and play on your iPhone without owning an Xbox in any way, shape, or form, which I thought was kind of, I mean, not really surprising, but mm-hmm. that struck me as kind of cool. I mm-hmm. like it. Yeah. So tell me, Adrian, what's your thoughts on the Xbox Cloud gaming service? So the first time I tried it. So I've been playing Farming Simulator. 
for starters, so that you don't think I'm talking about like some crazy first person shooter stuff because lag can be a thing and farming simulator is pretty gentle when it comes to lag. So I, I did not notice any, but I might not have noticed it. It might've been there. First time I played it, it was beautiful. Uh, no lag, like no stuttering, no dig degradation of video smooth from the start to finish. I played for like two hours all online on my laptop in the living room over Wi-Fi. Beautiful. However, I tried again the next day and it was dog shit. <laughs> so I, it was the exact opposite of that experience. It was stuttery and laggy and video was huh. chopping literally sitting in the same chair. So I'm pretty confident it wasn't on my end. Was it time of day at all? Do you think? Or? I I don't know. I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna test more. I'll uh, I'll update in a week or two because I am gonna play more of it. But I will say that I saw it at possibly its best, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. And I saw it at possibly its worst, and it was crap. So it's somewhere in between those two. Good. Um, Good. But I mean, it, it worked. I fired it up in Safari on my laptop and it worked great. It works on phones. It works on tablets. So assuming that the lag is rare rather than like assuming the worst was the rare part and not the best was the rare yes. part, then then it's a great service. So cool. Cool. Right on. Yeah. So how are you liking your new Xbox? I love it. Um, I think it's actually better. So I've played with the PlayStation 5, obviously. I I played the Xbox Series X a little bit too, but uh, I can pretty convincingly say now that it is much better than the PS5 only because of the Game Pass, which is kind of what you had mm -hmm. already said earlier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that The Xbox Game Pass is just so good. Mm -hmm. So good. The one thing I will give Xbox a lot of credit for is that their controller design that they came up with, I'm going to say even when they came out with the original Xbox, the smaller one, the smaller version of the yep. controller, that has evolved into every every generation of the Xbox, the controller just gets better and better and better and better. Uh, and yeah. I think, I, I honestly think like when it comes to like the controllers, you cannot go wrong with an Xbox controller. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Um, I actually, I have PS4, admittedly, PS4 controllers, although apparently the PS5 controllers suck and die after three months anyway. Oh, so, yeah. So that's a separate problem. <laughs> I've yeah. had, uh, so we've bought- uh, Three or four now? Four. Holy shit. So the one that came with my system, uh, a spring broke in one of the triggers. Yep. Okay. So I, not knowing at the time how to fix it, I set it aside and bought a new one. Uh, that one, so the same thing happened on the opposite trigger and it, and not long, like these aren't like, no, people were talking mm -hmm. about like, you know, a uh, couple hundred hours of playtime, not even. Yeah. Yeah. Very quick. Uh, so then I ended up buying a red one, which I, uh, spilled a whole bunch of coffee on. So that one's dead. Um, <laughs> that one's on me. I don't blame Sony for that one. You're out of the clear this one. Uh, and then the fourth one, the newest one that we got, the, the, the spring there's, there's a little, uh, it kind of like comes across loops and then goes around like that, right? And it fits. There's a little anchor in the middle of yep. the trigger and where the like yeah, the switch is. So you put this spring in there and then you have to finagle it underneath the trigger and then underneath a little port yep. in the trigger. Well, they break like you Constantly. would not believe, yep. especially on a PlayStation 5. I've had so many... Uh, PlayStation 4 controllers. It's the same spring that they use in in those triggers too. And I never had one of them break on me. No, I've never mm -hmm. had the the only PS4 controller that's uh, broken on me, the uh, rubberized covering on one of the joysticks. We've used it so much that that's just completely shed off. But I mean, <laughs> that's not really... No, that's... <laughs> that's a good sign, not yes. a bad yeah. sign. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, needless to say, uh, after the last one uh, broke, I finally said, you know, fuck it. And I looked up a video online. I took apart uh, three of the of the DualSense controllers that I had, and I ended up fixing both the triggers on one of them. And then I took the red back from the coffee-soaked red controller. <laughs> so now I have a Frankenstein uh, DualSense mm -hmm. that works great. Yeah. The triggers work. I've actually ordered some replacement springs in case this frequently happens a lot. I will say, uh, Swapping out the L2 spring, changing that is a lot easier than changing the R2 one because you have to actually remove the battery yeah. in order to 
get at the the anchor for the spring on the R2 side. But, but considering the cost of those controllers to begin oh. with, the... They're like hugely expensive. Yeah, they're like 90 bucks a piece Canadian. For the normal yeah. ones. Yeah. And then when you want yeah. the colored ones, you're paying like over 100, 100. bucks. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's brutal. For for such a little thing that's kind of crucial to just go all the time, like that's that's a disappointing yeah, aspect of such an expensive product. They're badly made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But all that to say, uh, I have PS4 controllers in the house. And I have one Xbox controller in the house, which is linked to my system. It is better enough that I will unlink it from my system and repair it to my laptop to play cloud gaming using that controller and then relink it to my Xbox mm-hmm. when I'm done because it is that much better than the PS4 yeah. controllers. Yeah. So yeah, controller, yeah. Xbox, way way better yeah. than the playstation like some of the like the end of and the touch the touchpad in it that they started with the, the, well, the playstation 4 like i can honestly cannot think apart from the demo uh the um uh the astros, astros playroom, playroom demo yeah. that came with the playstation 5 it was a free game that basically uh um it was like a demo for the control the dual senses uh controller functionality that's like the only game I have ever played myself that actually utilized the touchscreen, the touchpad as a touchpad. Oh, yeah. No, the touchpad is horrible. Like, uh, it's I a know, terrible idea. It's badly done. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's the same thing as when Apple switched to the touchpad for their TV remotes. Everybody yeah. fucking hates it because it's garbage. Yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, I know. It's like the PlayStation when you're when you go into like a search thing, you can use the touchpad to like scroll across the letters, click it to wow. input them. But in, that sucks. In theory, <laughs> yeah, you can do yeah. that. And I've never met anyone that can actually do that successfully. I, I tried it, and <laughs> I was just like, "Fuck this!" It's quicker for me to go. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I've never. I've never seen anyone actually use the touchpad. I forgot that that was the thing that you can technically do. Yeah. But apart from that, I mean, like what. No, it's garbage. I, the The PlayStation Four controller was really comfortable, and I I liked the change. I thought that change was great. The Dual Sense is bulkier, so I mean it's it's good for people with big hands, like you know you and I. Sure. Um, but all of the the haptic feedback thing, I don't care about. I really don't. I Not turned at it all. off. Yep. It's, yeah. It's yeah. like when uh, playing it in the Astros Playroom demo. Okay, yeah, this is this is cool, but in a in a game where you know, I, I don't want to feel resistance on a trigger. You yeah, know what I, mean? I mean, and they feel, the, and they feel like good. with something like that, like people that aren't don't understand that it's supposed to be there are gonna like squeeze harder. Like my init- my thoughts towards that, like without fully focusing on what my hands are doing, I'm gonna squeeze that harder because of that, and that's probably how a lot of the springs are breaking too. And it's just, uh, I don't yeah, know, it's yeah, mm, that probably it's doesn't a weird help. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I um. The, the light on the PlayStation controllers, at least the PS4s, was also kind of dumb. Yeah. Uh, like, I remember firing up GTA V, and as soon as I got a wanted level, it was flashing red and blue. And it's yeah. like, okay, I'm turning that off right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need that. Yeah. That's that's ridiculous. Actually, I had to Xbox, Microsoft, get your shit together. Uh, love it in every way, except that the, the white light on the Xbox controller oh, so is like so fucking bright. bright. You can turn it off, <laughs> yeah. which I did. Yeah. But it's in the accessibility menu. And I'm like, that's not accessibility. That's just don't fucking blind me while I'm playing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm literally, I fire it up. It's like 11 o'clock at night and I'm trying to kick back on the sofa and just relax and play. And I've got this fucking beacon in my face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's ridiculous. You know, it's, it's, it's occurred to me, this is the second week in a row we're shitting on Sony for something. <laughs> and it's not like, like disclaimer, it's we we like the products and the games that you release, Sony, but we're also not stupid. We know when you make shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? They, they really, they biffed it on the PS5. Not to say the PS5 is a bad console, because it's not. PS5 is a good console. It's a big console. Oh, it's, it's a chunky it's, console. It's big. It's frankly pretty fucking ugly. I mean, I mean, some people are like, oh, it's so pretty. And it's like, yeah, sure, but not for what it is. Yeah. It's a console, not an art piece. To be yeah. honest, though, they're both ugly. Uh, the Xbox, you mean, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the Xbox is, like, forgivably ugly because it's like, yeah, it's just an ugly box, yeah. but I'm okay with that. yeah. It wasn't, but, it wasn't trying to be pretty and no. failed. <laughs> yes. It, the, yeah, at least with the Xbox, you can like fit it in your, your yeah. entertainment unit and it's not taking up a weird amount of space. 
It's yeah, yeah. It just looks like a big ass modem. It looks yeah. like a big. I literally modem. it blends in with other crap that you have tucked in your entertainment system, which I think was the point. And you know what? It's fine and it works well. And like I said, I think it's forgivably ugly. Mm -hmm. Like, I will not say that it's not ugly because it is, but it is like expectedly ugly. You're like, yep, somebody made a box and put a fan in it. That's your console. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I've never really watched anything Star Trek, but for whenever I see it, the first thing I think of is Borg. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which honestly, I actually don't think Microsoft would hate if that's what people thought. Yeah. I personally thought like cut rake Mac. Pro, like the garbage can Mac Pros, because it's it's even got the fan in the top and everything else. Like it, it it's like somebody was gonna do that, but it was low poly enough that it turned into a square. Uh, but again, I like I don't need it to look pretty, right? That's not its goal. No, it, if it works, it, that's what my subwoofer is also a box. True. Right. Yeah. And like I don't need it to look pretty. Yeah. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the heat like coming? Because the it come the fan comes up from the top. So I haven't actually put my hand over it. I will see if I can cook a sausage on it someday. No, no, I meant like um, just, just, just like, is it, is I, it, does it expunge a lot of heat? Or? So I, I don't know because oh, I yeah. literally yeah. haven't gone near it while it was on. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I can tell you is that the fan doesn't seem to, the fan doesn't make a lot of noise. Well, so yeah. I don't think it's getting super toasty, but like, I'll see if I can fry yeah. an egg on it. Because cool. uh, why not, <gasps> right? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I could put an Optimus Prime on top of it. See if it there melts. There you go. No, just display. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I consider it like a display stand. Are you getting one? Oh, well, when hell, we can eventually. It, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so on the note of Xbox, uh, we're not just talking about Xbox uh, because of the Logitech thing or because we want to shit on Sony. There is actually one very important feature that I discovered just yesterday. And this might come as news to some of the viewers, too, because this is not a well-known feature. Xbox Series X has, and presumably Series S, if anybody cares about that, uh, has an interesting feature called Copilot. And it, at the system level, takes two controllers, possibly even more than two, but definitely two, and treats them as one. So two people are playing the exact same controller, but with two different controllers. So you can have one person running and one person shooting. For instance, you can see where I'm going with this. Uh, we are going to definitely try this out and definitely film the results. Mm-hmm. It's it's actually an accessibility feature, I assume, because there are people who, I mean, for example, I can imagine it might be difficult to play if you only had one hand, for instance. Yep. So it's mm-hmm. it's under the accessibility menu and it is an accessibility feature. But for obvious reasons, it could be a lot of fun as well. Yes. So I discovered that it's not well known, um, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try it out. We're gonna have some fun. It's funny. The one thing that kind of popped into my head was: uh, Do you remember uh, way way back the NES, the uh, Rob the Robot? No. No. Okay. So it came with a game called Gyromite. It was just this robot where you you put a Nintendo controller down, and it would pick up these little tops. And it would move it from one thing to another. And they were color coded. So one was blue, one was red. And in the game, as you're as you're navigating these mazes and stuff, you would come up to these uh, barricades that were either red and blue. And you'd have to like hit a button or something and it would make Rob pick up the top. And so if you're waiting for a red barrier to come up, he would pick up the top and then move it over to the button that would make the red barriers go up. But then the blue barriers would drop. So it was like a tandem thing. You were working in tandem with this robot. The problem was this fucking robot took forever. (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. But you could play it with another person controlling the... The robot. So Yeah. So so this is what's kind of... I'm I'm drawing comparisons to where it's like if you're... If you're running through the maze and I'm controlling all of the... All of the... All of the the, uh, barricades and stuff, Mm -hmm. right? Sure. so, so I admit, I uh, so two things. One, I I immediately thought about games like Mech Warrior, uh, because there were actually games in the say in the Mech Warrior sort of. Uh, I don't know if Mech Warrior was one of these, but there were games where the idea was one person you were in a mech, one person controlled the movement, one person controlled the guns. Uh, this is not unique. There have been games that do this multiplayer, or whatever. Uh, that's one of the things that I thought about. And of course, because I discovered this while playing Farming Simulator, I also thought about, (laughs) 
you know, obviously you can have one person controlling all of the tools that are attached to your tractor and one person driving the tractor. Obviously. I am, by the way, completely obsessed with Farming Simulator. Uh, oh, and, man, that'd be great. And actually, God damn it, Adrian, why are you making the field look like a shitty buzz cut? Get the fuck off my back, Chad. What the hell? I am it's a, funny just imagining plowing that way because I've literally, like, I grew up around antique tractors and, and uh, steam shows and whatnot. And my uh, my uncle has driven uh, a family run, I guess, a tractor that's been around for a while in um, a big plowing display where it's been like mm -hmm. 20 of these types of tractors all pulling like 50 plows or more at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So you just, you ha literally have two people doing for sure. The job. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I also, I want to play farming simulator multiplayer because you can do multiplayer as well, which is great. Cause then, cause there are things <laughs> that actually take two tractors, right? Yep. Uh, one person driving combine, one person driving a tractor, tractor. Yep. whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I am now obsessed and there's actually a good reason for it. Aside from the fact that it tickles my inner, just weirdo nerd. Mm -hmm. Um, it is a game of unbelievable precision. Uh, yes. It allows you to be sloppy, but I uh, like you can it's simulated well enough that like loading bales of hay onto a trailer, you can be sloppy to some degree. But at the same time, if you want to get like maximum load on trailers, you have to be very, very precise with your motions and you have to control it. Not that unlike an actual forklift would be controlled mm -hmm. front end loader, whatever you have. Yeah. Uh, I've been digging it and part of the reason is because it's been so long since I've tried to seriously play console games like I played Diablo 3 and a few other things mm -hmm. but it's been so long since I've seriously played console games that just actually like training myself with precision on game controllers is uh, it's nice to get back into that and and like really you know, I want my tractor to move forward at like 0.5 kilometers an hour. <laughs> it's, it's like, mm -hmm. you gotta be, you gotta be feather light on those yep. goddamn joysticks. Yeah. So uh, I've been really enjoying it. And it's not just because I'm a complete fucking nerd. It's also like, if you want to practice controller precision while doing mindless uh, farming desks, uh, it's fantastic. So, nice. Right yeah. on. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I guess we'll, we're going to talk about Diablo too. That's what we're yeah. going to do. Yeah. Cause I, this is another nerd thing that I was into. Um, they, I don't have too much to say about this because it is ongoing now. Like probably still when this video is posted, go to, if you're interested in ARGs, uh, well, mixed reality game anyways, uh, Check out the Diablo subreddit because I'm sure it's still going on. Uh, there was a patch, the 2.5 uh, Resurrected. And as part of the press release, they included an image with um, a cipher in it. There was a coin that led to a cipher that, was, that would decode some text on a book. And then in the lobby, you like click gems and it gives you a code in the game. And... People are deciding like it maps to pages of the rule book and like words in the rule book. So it's like encoded messages that you can get. And I think everybody gets a different like random, not random, but a different sequence of numbers. That makes and sense. And it's like a community yep. thing that everybody has to pool their mm -hmm. their uh, their experience. And um, it's still ongoing. Like I don't have a resolution because it's still ongoing, but there is like a live game going on, like an ARG game within Diablo 2. That's so cool. That's so, so cool. And it, yeah, it might result in some cool mysteries from the game being solved, mm -hmm. or it might just be a new ad for something. Who knows? It's, you know, but uh, it is oh, literally ongoing. I really hope it's not something that's kind of linked with Diablo Immortal. Uh, well, it will be one way or another. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's face it. They're going to tie it into Immortal somehow. But mm. maybe there's a long-standing undiscovered thing in Diablo 2 that also has something to do with Immortal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who knows? I mean, it would be if I were Blizzard and I had put something into Diablo 2, you know, what? Almost, well, no more than 20 years ago because it was like, no, 20 years because it's 2002, I think, right? I believe so, yeah. Something like that. Anyways, long time ago. <laughs> uh, 
and nobody had discovered it yet, and it had something to do with the new game that I was releasing, I'd want people to discover it before the new game came out. Yep. Because <laughs> yep. it'd be yeah. weird if they discovered it after. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember um, a few years ago, Wizards did something with an ARG as well. Yep. That, yeah. They're cool. I yeah, like them. Yeah, they're so cool. I never have enough time to participate in them when no. they're ongoing, partly because they always release them on like a Thursday. It's like... D- yeah jackass release it friday night yeah. come on yeah, yeah. <laughs> of I, course in fairness uh i don't know what time zone it was released in mm. it may have been i i don't know is is china ahead of us or behind us is it they're, they're in the future they're in the future yes. yeah so maybe it was yeah. friday for them i don't yeah. know but anywho uh that should still be going on i doubt they'll have solved it by tomorrow morning so mm-hmm. uh if you're into that check it out and maybe they have solved it and either way check it out yeah. if you're interested because yeah, yeah. uh It'll probably be something Diablo lore related. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Adrian, what's going on with Pathfinder? Pathfinder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pezo uh, released the remake of Kingmaker, which for anyone who doesn't know is a 1 to 20 adventure uh, that is specifically around the idea of instead of being the adventurers adventurers that go out and do things for the town or the king or whatever, uh, this entire module is based around you creating settlements, kingdoms, whatever. You being the king that, uh, either, well, you being the king or your group running the kingdom or, mm-hmm. or however you want to interpret it um, and sending other people out to do your bidding. And so it's got a whole bunch of stuff around uh, creating settlements and kingdoms and NPCs that you can have as part of your your kingdom and everything else. It is chunky, though. It is 650 pages, but it was released literally today. So uh, so yesterday for you watching. So Civilization, the tabletop RPG? Yeah, yeah, Ooh. pretty much. Uh, and it's it's a remake. So, so uh, people may already know when I say Kingmaker, uh, anyone who played the original, uh, they they may be like, oh, shit, there's a new one because it's it is a new one. It's it's remade for Pathfinder 2.0. Uh, so if you are familiar with the old one, uh, from what they said, it is true to that. Uh, I will be checking it out because mm. it sounds super fun. That sounds fun. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Sounded- I like that. Cool. Game I found on Steam today that sounds funny and hilarious and amazing is called Trombone Champ, and it's basically Guitar Hero, but you're playing a trombone. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, so ridiculous, and I, I love the, the concept of it. We're going to have to uh, see if we can check it out, but uh, also I caught just a snippet. This is just a headline, so I don't know what the actual details are, but I did catch a snippet that the creator of Trombone Champ... I uh, said that more games need to just go like all in on humor and just yeah. just be silly. Yeah, yeah. They I was glancing through the article too, and they were like, I don't know why this is so randomly popular, but uh, things happen, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. people people like weird. Yeah, I mean, if it's the right type of weird, you're hell. Yeah, we're banking on people liking weird right yes. now. So <laughs> weird kids grow up to be weird adults. Yeah. You wanna you wanna mention these uh, D and D teaching kits? Are, yeah. yeah, Wizards is also releasing D and D teaching kits. Um, there's two kits. There's one that is what is it? Uh, three to six or something like that, and then six to eight. Uh, these are ages, not grades. Grades, 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 and yeah. So what the idea with them, especially the the first level ones, is it's introducing kids with how to. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's apparently getting bored. <laughs> oh no! Oh, Sarah, gonna, on, continue telling Sarah, us what's going on. Sarah cannot deal with these goggles, uh, and and I can understand why they oh. are they are hard to wear. They are kaleidoscopic goggles. <laughs> the world is so colorful now. <laughs> All right, well, I'll pick I'm it just going to do the rest of this with my eyes closed. <laughs> there it is. There um, it is. But yeah, the the first the first set um, is to introduce kids on how to build characters and that sort of stuff, kind of giving them situations where they've got to problem solve and stuff. And then the second box is to kind of give them more of a a taste and an understanding of how D and D works. And the, they're supposed to be um, beginner friendly enough that if it's even a teacher that's heard of D and D but never played it or have any understanding, they're supposed to be able to step in pretty easily and. 
I'm hoping that this kicks off uh, the Satanic Panic version 2.0. Oh, uh, yes. Because clearly this is Wizards of the Coast trying to indoctrinate children. <laughs> uh, and and you should protest this uh, for whatever reasons you decide you have. Because Wizards could use more publicity. They, yeah. they don't get enough no. love. No, no, well, no. I don't no. know. Wouldn't so. parents love it now that uh, Stranger Things is a thing? Actually, that's a good point. These yeah. days, I'm not even sure that now, that's a thing. <laughs> now, though, if you're not playing D&D, you're a goddamn devil worshiper. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you're a yeah. loser kid and a devil worshiper. They're trying to save your children. <laughs> ah. uh, yeah. So that that is cool. I mean, I obviously, none of us have kids. Um, but if you do, this is something official that you might want to check out. Although I feel like a parent is going to know how to... Uh, indoctrinate their kids better than the school would, hopefully. Um, but if you're if you're a teacher and you want to make your children worship Satan, go for it. Hey, I hope that doesn't that's not libelous, right? We're good. We're meh, good. Whatever. <laughs> um. So we got some other stuff that we'll probably rapid fire here. I think that's all of the really kind of interesting stuff. Um, Die by the Blade. This one looked cool. Yeah. Chad's excited. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. So any uh, classic PS1 players who uh, ever tried Bushido Blade 1 or 2, Die by the Blade is basically a next-gen version of that. It it has... Uh, it's, a, it's a fighting game, a uh, weapons-based fighting game, but there is one-hit kills in it. And if anybody remembers the classic Bushido Blade, which was basically like a samurai fighting game, if you hit your opponent... In a specific spot, you could kill him in one hit. Yeah, I feel like it's probably not all that specific because, yeah. like, I mean, let's face it, if you get hit by a sword... You're probably dead. Yeah. 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 Which I think is cool. Uh, I probably won't play it because I don't find myself overly driven to sword games. Uh, I might check it out, but I do yeah. like the idea of, like, realistic... Going into it knowing full well that you are going to get your ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah, I probably will not play it just because I know I will be absolutely terrible at it and never will see past the first level <laughs> sure yeah but i will yeah. watch chad play it there you go we'll all watch chad play it yeah whether he knows it or not <laughs> speaking of what else chad's played uh this week uh i obviously still playing metal hill singer i talked about it last week so i'm not gonna get into you know it what anymore. i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about metal hill singer mm. uh i hate fps is on consoles that's that's Fair. my two cents. But I'm going to play it on PC because it is a cool game. Uh, Chad, everything Chad said about it was true. Uh, it's a neat game with the increasing audio as you hit the beats. And it is skillful and I like it in theory, mm -hmm. but I hate FPS is on console. Very fast too. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong in the co in the uh, comments on that one. Yep. Uh, but I'm going to check it out on PC yeah. and uh, maybe I'll love it there. Yep. Uh, I've also, uh, I like I said, I was... Uh, down with the sickness uh monday and tuesday Ew. so uh no. yeah it was great it was awesome um uh there's a demo hashtag, out now hashtag not covid yeah not covid no <laughs> uh there's a demo out for uh a game called valkyrie elysium it's a it's a sequel to a long-standing series by square enix but it's taking a different route it's going of a more uh action hack and slash uh kind of gameplay style as opposed to the uh, tactical RPG that it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I played the demo. Uh, it still felt kind of early and like there was a still uh, a lot of, graphically it looked like there was a lot of empty kind of environments. Mm -hmm. uh, old architecture, stuff like that. You play a, a Valkyrie, obviously. Um, descending to Midgar and doing Odin the All Father's Will. Uh, combat's pretty good. Uh, it's typical hack and slash. I kind of uh, compare it to like Devil May Cry style where uh, you get like a hit combo and you gain so much experience based off of that. Uh, you only get to use two weapons in the game. Uh, both of them are kind of felt the same, uh, but definitely want to keep an eye on that's going to release, I believe at the end of the month. So yeah, I might check that out. Yeah. This week, actually it was just last night cause it only released yesterday. I started playing cereal cl cleaner, cereal cleaner. There we go. One shot. Um, it is a top down game where you're playing, you're, you're split between four different characters that are, um, fixers for, um, uh, a mob boss in the mid nineties. 
Chad's trying to throw Sarah off by writing in the document. So I had to, I had to close my laptop a little bit. Um, (laughs) But uh, it's basically the stories. I've only played the first four missions, which is just all of chapter one. And uh, it's New Year's Eve, 99. Oh, God, what are you two doing? Keep going, keep going. Oh, man, I hate you I read what he wrote in the doc. Oh. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it's 99 and they're... uh, reminiscing on different uh, jobs that they were cleaning up for, and you're just playing through the jobs. So it's pretty neat. Like you, uh, you have to stealth around because there's always security guards or cops. You have to vacuum up blood and dirtiness and whatnot, and move bodies and move evidence around. And so yeah, so this is really something good. that I would enjoy too, because I think you'd like the stealth aspects of it. Yeah. I like so you things. gave up on your sorry, you gave up on your GTA five uh, crime scene cleaner and you're just playing this instead. Well, no, I, ha- I haven't started my GTA five <laughs> cl- crime scene cleaner, but gotcha. I still want you so bad. Yeah. No, it sounds interesting. Uh, I might give it a go at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so so just to let you in on the joke, uh, Chad's comment uh, in the doc was cereal cleaner because she's so messy when eating cereal. <laughs> Um, so damn sloppy. You just clean those floors on Tuesday. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll tell you what I'm about to start playing that I literally, as we're recording this, because while these two were talking, I was looking at the latest games one last time. Uh, 2D Human Workshop. Uh, what I can tell what I can tell you about it so far is that it is a physics simulator that's 2D, so it's it's side view 2D, uh, and some of the images that were presented in the store page was a man riding a what appeared to be a quad uh, with a shotgun shooting through several mannequins. Uh, another one was uh, somebody just being dropped off of a ledge. Uh, it looks like basically ragdoll physics, but Ooh. with <laughs> vehicles and weapons. And uh, so I just purchased it. It's about I think it was five bucks, something like that, maybe eight bucks. Uh, I will uh, I will drop a note in Discord after I get a chance to play it and see what happens. Oh yeah, uh, it looks it looks like it could be the next sort of besieged sort of uh, game or not besieged. Uh, if if you know the game I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I can't remember the name. But the uh, the crazy one where you lob catapults at uh, form battle formations is the one I'm thinking of. So, anyways, 2D Human Workshop. Just got it. Know nothing about it other than the fact that those images made me think it looks great. So that's what I'm going to be playing later tonight. Uh, Real quick, uh, not that it matters to anyone in the international audience or even the national ones for that matter, but I thought it was kind of neat. Hamilton Mohawk, which is a college that's nearby us. uh, They just announced that they're going to be doing a game design program because gaming is on the rise. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I I thought that was great. I mean... That's all I have to say about it. I yeah. think that's great. Yep. That's awesome. really neat. Yep. Cool. Uh, what about this? Uh, what's this girl does not exist you wrote in here? Yeah, that that's the, um, there was an AI created game, like a game fully created by an AI. They did the voiceovers. They chose the images, the storyline, basically everything. Huh. And uh, yeah, it's the first fully AI created game. How much is it? Like. Less than six bucks. Might have to pick that one up too. Yep. That, um, uh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. it It's l- just looking at it. It's literally just like a puzzle game with pictures of women, but it's like just their face. So yeah, it's, I think just conceptually, it's kind of a neat idea, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's neat, but also I think it, it was made, I think in response to all of the AI created of created art that's been like sure so yep. public lately yep. um so yeah it's, it's kind of interesting that way yeah yeah interesting yeah it does look like it is just straight up like a, a digital puzzle yeah like and, and not like a problem solving but like literally, literally a like jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle jigsaw, game yeah. uh but yeah that looks kind of interesting uh might uh, might give that a looky loo mm-hmm I'm all up. I'm always, although I do hate when people call it AI generated because it's not artificial intelligence. It's machine learning. Yeah. And, and and as someone who actually is like at arm's length from that field, I I really actually hate it when people say it's AI. When we hit AI, you'll know. Until then, it's machine learning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's cool. That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Uncharted Journeys. Uh, this is actually 
Uh, I'm going to, even though you're the one that looked this up and I know nothing more than what you told it, uh, I'm going to do this one because it's actually interesting to me and I'm going to pick it up. Uh, The Uncharted Journeys from Cubicle 7, uh, which is, from what you said, it's basically putting a module, well, not a module, but like putting actual like pre-written content together Mm -hmm. for what happens when you're going on longer treks in your D&D game. So if you have to go from one city to the next... Here's some things that you might run into sort of thing. It's it's basically a book to uh, fill in the gaps. Cool. Which I think is cool. Yeah, it's really it cool. Yeah. The the publisher, Cubicle 7, has made um, – they, they, they use these based off of uh, – they created the five, 5E rules based off of the Lord of the Rings – RPG mm-hmm. rule set that's already existing. So yeah. I think that's really neat. It's it's something that's sorely lacking. Yeah, and you know, as a as a DM, I uh, I always want to do something with mm-hmm. travel, and so obviously uh, often I will just kind of like do quick throwaway encounters that don't really mean anything. But uh, I always looking for inspiration, so that's uh, that's yeah. interesting. I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah, hell yeah. And uh, to our friends over in the United Kingdom, uh, EGX is currently happening right now. Yeah, although I actually looked, and unless you already have badges, you're you're out of luck. So uh, if you're so there, never mind. <laughs> if, you're, if you're there, rock on. I, I so it's called EGX. It's the um, I want to say it's European Gaming Exchange or something like that. But uh, anyways, it's in London. It's a gaming conference. Uh, it's in partnership with Virgin. Uh, and, uh, Virgin Mobile, I believe, although Virgin has eight different companies, so who knows? (laughs) Um, and, uh, yeah, it it looked cool. I was hoping they might have more digital content, although I did a quick look through their, uh, through their site Mm. and it honestly doesn't look like a lot's being streamed. That may be up to individual presenters, so there might Mm -hmm. still be some stuff going. But it didn't look like they had a Twitch channel going. So uh, I might be wrong, though. Yeah. Uh, last time uh, we talked about PAX, I said that Act Inc. wasn't happening. And then uh, Richard said, no, you idiot. It happened on Sunday. Yep. I didn't actually say, no, you idiot. But nevertheless. He probably did. He probably he did. Yeah. Yeah. Privacy <laughs> in, in the comment, he did. Yes. <laughs> uh, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Sure, sir. You <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I... It, Keep an eye out for it, but it, it honestly, it kind of looks like unless you're there, you're, you're SOL. So, yep. uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I guess that'll. Yeah. It up. was this week actually had stuff to talk about. Yeah. And yeah. actually there was, I mean, it was D and D, not uh, D and D and Pathfinder, not board game. We're still waiting for good board game news. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's new board games coming out all the time, but, uh, I don't want to get into the habit of just like, here's the new board games that are coming out this week. There are already channels that do that yeah. and they get pre-release copies. So watch them instead. When we yeah. start getting pre-release, when we're big enough to get pre-release board games, We'll start doing those. Until yeah. then, I don't know. I'm not that interested in that content. If you no. are, let us know. Yeah. Let us know what you'd like us to cover in general. We're yeah. always open to uh, to changing up format yep. a little yeah. bit. Yep. And uh, please like, subscribe. If you're not, uh, talk to, tell your friends about us, please. Uh, let us know what games you're playing down in the comments. Uh, what's been keeping you occupied? Whether it be board, video, cards, anything like. Uh, yeah. Just just let us know what you're playing. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're furious with uh, wizards about D and D or magic or any of the other things that they do, uh, let us know because I know magic. There's some controversy around the latest Lotus and everything. Um, mm. I don't know enough to get into it, but I know there's controversy. <laughs> if you have a PlayStation Five and your Dual Sense spring on your on your L two or Ultra Trigger broke, one, did it piss you off? And two. Want me to fix it for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ship it to P.O. Box. No, don't do that. Don't, don't, do don't that. try. Don't. It won't work. <laughs> we don't have a P.O. Box. Um, that's why it won't work. Well, yeah. that's one of the reasons it won't work. Uh, yeah. No, check. Uh, do do comment. Let us know uh, what you're up to gaming and otherwise. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're into it, we do have a Discord. The links are down there. We have a Steam community, too. Yeah, which I still haven't posted those yeah, reviews to. Yeah, I still haven't done mine yet either. Whoops. Our we'll get- normal jobs keep us busy. I'll tell you what. I will check out 2D Workshop, 2D Human Workshop, and I will review it this weekend. Okay. So I will hold you to that. You better. I will. If I haven't done it by Sunday, you are welcome to come over and uh, throw cupcakes at me until I finish it. That doesn't seem like a punishment. I will eat the cupcakes. Have you ever been pelted with cupcakes? It's messy. Well, yeah, but 
If if I was coming to your house and you were throwing cupcakes at me, that wouldn't be a punishment. But somebody has to clean it up, and it's probably going to be me because I don't think Danielle would clean up after somebody else pelting me with cupcakes. <laughs> She'd probably ask me not to come around anymore. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and, and on that's, that note, and that's how the podcast ended. <laughs> and on that. Thank you, folks. Have a good week, and we'll see you next week. We love you all. Love Cheers. you. Bye.